Nick, your skin is amazing. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, um, I need to know it. You know, I'm right. The podcast on the covers of the origin stories of some of the biggest names in sports, media, entertainment, and reality TV. Nick Durst here along with Joe Calabrese. You already heard our guest, but Joe, tell everybody who we have with us here today. Uh, we still have uh, the most recently evicted house guest. We have Big Brother. <laughs> We'll get we'll, we'll get to that a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy that I got a good chuckle. Hi, Sim. Welcome to the show. This is what we do. Nick and I, we love reality TV. We're happy for you to join us. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. Uh, week number two is the most recent Evicted House guest. <laughs> <laughs> and you wanted to play in last week's Pressure Kirker competition. Uh, I bet you're thinking about that again now, right? Yeah, of course. I would have loved to play that game. So how many times did you try out for big brother uh, before you got cast for this season i tried out in 2017 uh at that same time i was running for seattle city council uh and so you're not allowed to run for public office and also be on big brother uh and then i applied for uh this season season 25 there you go so hi so do you miss that exercise bike that you were constantly shown on because every every oh, episode like three or four times we show you on the bike yeah, I was trying to find stuff to do. <laughs> Instead of playing the game, I guess I was exercising. Um, no, I don't miss that bike. That bike was uncomfortable. I don't normally ride an exercise bike. Uh, I normally basically uh, run and lift weights. Uh, but, you know, you have to stay active as much as possible because a, a strong body equals a strong mind. Has anybody reached out to you yet about an endorsement deal, about a hat line or a bandana line? Because you have so many <laughs> They should. I love a good hat and I love a good bandana, right? Like, uh, you know, I, I they should. <laughs> All right. We'll I, would, I would rock if, their hat. <laughs> if everyone's listening, reach out to high yeah, if There's an endorsement deal out there for hats or bandanas. I'm your guy. <laughs> Absolutely. So like Joe, like Joe mentioned, you're, you're the last house guest evicted at this at this point. You had some time to sit through it now. Any regrets about the way you handled your HOH? Do you think maybe you should have been a little less verbal about your intentions about getting Riley out and how you spoke to Riley? Just your thoughts on how it all played out, you know, two weeks out now. Yeah. I mean, I think that I wish people could have seen um, more of who I am. Uh, you know, I was playing very competitively, uh, as I've said to people in the past, like when you're playing a game, uh, any game, right? Like sometimes your competitive nature comes out and that's what you see. And sometimes your playing goes a little too far. Uh, and my playing went a little too far. Of course, I don't want people to remember me as Heisen's reign of terror. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, part of what you see there is just, um, having a plan. Uh, believing that that plan was the right direction forward, being confident in that plan. Uh, I thought that we as a collective group were all on the same page. I totally miss that we're not. Um, and that's a huge mistake, uh, a mistake that cost me uh, staying in the house, a mistake that cost me the money, right? Well, yeah. And so, yeah, if, if I could change anything, of course, it's to to listen more and talk less. Well, I appreciate the way you played because I always told Joe, if I came on, like, sure, I want to win, but I wouldn't go on to win. I want to go out, go on and show out, go out and just win the comps, cause chaos, wreak havoc, and, you know, get gain some clout on the other end of the show. So I like that you came in, you won those competitions. Uh, you actually, you maybe were holding back a bit in some of these competitions because I thought you were great. So you, obviously you were in the better, the better competitors for comps. Anybody else that you thought was maybe on your level? Um, the cast as far as competitions is concerned yeah i think that what i thought i was was a overall well-rounded competitor i thought that i would be good at mental competitions physical competitions stamina competitions and speed competitions and you see uh that i am actually good at several of those things i think that in the house there are people who are exceptional at some of those right like uh matt being a physical competitor uh you know this is the the concern i had right i was concerned about izzy and corey being mental competitors right i think i was concerned about um america and mimi being endurance competitors and and what you find is i'm not wrong right uh is that when you watch them in those competitions that's actually where they're excelling 
right? Uh, the difference was, is I felt like overall, I was just a well-rounded competitor. Uh, and I wasn't expecting uh, to perform as well as I did, uh, but I did what I did. Um, and I'm proud of what I did. Uh, what I will say is that um, when I went into the game, you know, winning was the point, but there were other things I wanted to show, right? Which was, I wanted to show that uh, I, that gay Arab Muslims exist, one, two, that we can hold space, uh, three, that we can be competent, and four, we can play for a higher purpose, like older adults or LGBT issues. Uh, and and hopefully that is what I accomplished by being on the show. Well, you certainly came to the perfect podcast uh, for being right. <laughs> one more right? quick question strategy wise here mm-hmm. who do you think is the best positioned in the house right now uh Corey's in the best position right now right so Corey has actually been sort of in between oh. two major alliances he's america's think- sweetheart too yeah and and america's sweetheart right like the two of them are really cute the problem that is now arising as you're watching is like now people are seeing the two of them together yeah. Uh, and Corey's game of being in the middle is now shifting because now they're seeing them as a showmance. Uh, and that potentially is going to change the calculus of the house. Yeah. The other thing that you're, the, the other thing I'll be interested to see now that Jag has uh, been evicted, but not evicted, is that Jag, the reason I was targeting Jag is Jag is really good at organizing people. And a lot of people may not see that, but he's really, really a talented organizer. He's social, he's fun, he's pleasant, he's smart. And because of all of those things, the reason I was so interested in Jag is that I was afraid that he would mount an army, right? Mm -hmm. Just like he and Riley did against me. And so my interest in Jag was purely because he is a very strong competitor and they were right to evict him. He was just was saved by Matt. And of course, Matt and Jag are very close, right? And Matt doesn't really, uh, and to just give you some insight about Matt, it's like Matt came up to my room to say, I will do anything if you don't evict Riley, right? Like I will do anything, like whatever you need. Uh, but I, my decision had already been made, right? I was confident in my decision. That's what it was. And he feels that same way about Jag. Right. And so he's going to do whatever it takes to keep him safe, even if that means putting him at himself at jeopardy. Great insight. Hi, Sam. How are you able to put your medical and burlesque careers on hold in order to do the show? I will tell you, it wasn't easy. Uh, I, a lot of accommodations had to be made. I, I fortunately had a, a, a boss who was very understanding. Uh, without that, I wouldn't have been able to do the show. Uh, that's the truth. Um, is that the reason why I can be on Big Brother is that I get accommodations, accommodations uh, from my work, accommodations from the people that I, I love uh, who are who are wanting me and willing enough to let me take this chance, right? Um, but I, I, it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't easy. Uh, being away from being a doctor for 100 days is crazy. Um, you know, you have patients and patients are depending on you. Uh, but thankfully the people I worked with were willing to step up and, and take over. Uh, but, uh, I, and I owe them a huge debt of gratitude, uh, to basically let me, uh, live out this adventure, um, even at the sacrifice of them working harder. So do you think you'll potentially get more patients now or more ticket sales from your burlesque shows due to your appearance on Big Brother? Oh, I have enough patience. <laughs> uh, what you don't know is that um, geriatric psychiatrists, or you may know, uh, geriatric, there's only 3,000 of us in the country. Wow. And, and that's for 330 million people. Uh, I have definitely enough patience. Um, as far as like ticket sales on my burlesque show, um, uh, hopefully. <laughs> You know, theater is in a really unique place right now where uh, people are trying to decide if they want to spend their money on live entertainment, especially with so much of it being online. And to get people to actually go out and see something really takes a a tremendous amount of effort. I'm hoping that my BB experience, people want to come see a burlesque show. A lot of people haven't seen a burlesque show uh, and or a cabaret show. And yeah, of course, I want them to see what it's all about. And I want to encourage a whole new group of artists uh, to basically explore uh, this meeting media uh, and, and express themselves. So I hope so. And I hope that there are people who want to perform with me. And if there are people who want to perform with me, yeah, hit me up on Instagram. I'm there. 
<laughs> see a Vegas residency in your future. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That is a great scene for for burlesque and, and cabaret, right? What we're missing is space. Um, and so if there's a great space, of course, I want I want to basically put my burlesque cabaret show there. I'm still working on all that. Yeah. There you go. So what you're saying, your life, your career, or your reality TV venture here is your do no harm right moment. So what I mean by that is a time or place where you wanted to pursue something. You asked somebody for advice. They said, hi, some, that's a terrible idea. Don't do that. And you were like, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. And ultimately, you will see why it is that I'm right. Um, reality television, right? My foray into Big Brother. Um, I, have a, I, I have had a, a great life. Uh, I'm a doctor. I am connected to the artistic community. I'm politically involved. Uh, I'm well respected. Uh, you know, I have good friends and family. Uh, so no one could understand why I was doing Big Brother. Uh, they were like, why would you sacrifice all that you have to basically do a reality television show? And I still don't know what the result of that will be. Um, I still don't know if this decision will move into something new, but I have to believe uh, that when you take a risk, when you're courageous, that something good will come out of it. And I think that's what you're getting at, is that we often take a risk without knowing sort of where it will land us. Uh, but the important part is to be courageous enough and brave enough to try. Uh, and one of the things that I always preach to my patients is you have to try. You have to be brave enough to try. And that's what Big Brother was about for me, right? Was being brave enough to basically leave my life behind, try something new, experience it, and then see what happened next. Awesome words. Thank you, Hysom. We really appreciate you joining us. One last question here, because I, uh, I'm i the astrology guy between Nick and I, right? Ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> I told you, Joe, he's gonna love this. Nick I, yeah, so we put this question on the rundown, not for everybody, but specifically, I think, for people who we think would enjoy the question. Yes. Um, so what is your zodiac sign and you resonate with it? I'm a Pisces and I do, right? I'm a sensitive, emotional person. Uh, I'm also very artistic. Um, yeah, so I do resonate with it a bit. What is your birthday, if you don't mind me asking? March 14th, 1978. Hi, how about that? Huh? Pie day. Three, uh, yeah, three, three pie day. Hours. I celebrate with all my friends by buying pie for everybody. <laughs> Nick, Nick is a, Nick's a huge pizza guy, right? Huge pizza guy, loves it. Um, so we're based out of here in New York City. So uh, if you're ever around over here, uh, if you need some place to go, a recommendation for the best pizzas, uh, certainly you should reach out to Nick or I. We would help enjoy oh my God. that's the best especially when like there's so many different types of pizzas uh what i will tell you is i'm a fry guy so if you want a good recommendation for fries in seattle i've got you <laughs> there we go fair enough we got a good spot can't wait absolutely can't wait uh hi some again thank you for your time we really really appreciate it what we do here is we always give our guests the last words uh so if there's anything else you would like to share uh, or promote for yourself by all means go ahead you know we wish you the best of luck moving forward yeah, uh, I'm going to say two things. One, my social media is my first name, H-I-S-A-M dot G-O-U-E-L-I. And the second thing I will say is be brave and take a chance. All right. Thanks, Heisen. That's great words of advice. There. That's going to do it here for this episode of You Know I'm Right for our very special guest from Big Brother Heisen, for my co-host Joe. I'm Nick, and this has been You Know I'm Right. Mm -hmm.